Hey, good morning, John and Jessina. All right, let's begin this time with a word of prayer and uh, we'll get into our session. Father, we thank you once again for this wonderful opportunity you've given us. We thank you for your wisdom, for your grace, Lord, for everything that you've done for us, Lord, and you're doing in each of our lives. And Lord, we just commit this time into your hands, even as we study and learn and bring this course to a completion, Lord, we pray that you will, Lord, continue to deposit in our hearts, in our spirits, the things of God. Uh, and Lord, we just ask for a greater, greater measure of anointing, a greater measure of your grace upon each of our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So this class, uh, I, I just thought we'll just do the the appendix on uh, chapter 29. Just wanted to talk a little bit on uh, how to, uh, you know, create a survey when it comes to, uh, you know, before planting a church, before launching out. It's very important. We talked about, uh, you know, preparing, preparing a survey, looking out and, you uh, uh, you know the practical aspects and also the spiritual aspects. Uh, so what I, what we'll do this session is we'll just quickly, you know, just take look at an overview of how we can build uh, a survey and how the survey will help us going forward when it comes to you know church planting and uh, building ministries within the church as well. Uh, and also after that we will, uh, uh, I think we will. Uh, just open it up if there's any questions. If not, then we can bring this course to a completion. Uh, what we would like to do is, what I'll do is, uh, towards the end, uh, uh, we will, I will, uh, you know, put the final assessments uh, probably by the end of this week or maybe early next week. Uh, it's going to be simple questions, very practical questions. It's going to be again an open book exam. So. Uh, so you can spend some time studying and reading and uh, just learning. So, uh, so let's get into this portion of in chapter twenty nine on your notes. If you have your notes with you, uh, this, this this is a sample survey. It's done many years back, but uh, the reason it's put here is to help us understand how to build a survey. Now, now sometimes when you think about a survey, it's not just okay. Uh, what are the shops around? What are the models around? It, it, it's not that. It's not about, uh, yes, we look at colleges, malls, all of that. But uh, when we build a survey, uh, you know, it gives us direction as to uh, how to build your ministry. What are the points where you can, you know, permeate places where that you can penetrate as a church? Uh, so let's look at this. Okay, chapter 29. Now, uh, this is for Bangalore. I know many of us are not in Bangalore. and Maybe you are in different uh, towns and uh, different cities. Uh, but you can use this as a, as a framework to build your uh, survey, right? OK, first one, background information, um, you know, where, which, what is the city all about? What is, uh, is, it, is it recognized for? So here in the notes, you see Bangalore's home to well-recognized educational institutions, research institutions, uh, and it's the nation's leading IT exporter. So, so first thing in your background, you have at least three. You know, So for example, you're in a, a tier two city, uh, right? maybe another city in a, in, a, in a different nation. So you look at maybe two or three areas where that city is recognized for, what that city is recognized for, right? So for, so for example, um, if you go up to other uh, states in in India, uh, if you go up Varanasi, Uttar, Uttar Pradesh, right? You, you know, okay, uh, that's a place where these are the challenges, but what is it well known for? It's known for, you know, it's it's a religious, it's a pilgrim center for the Hindus. And uh, and so you've got a lot of religious things that are happening there. You also know that Varanasi is, you know, when you talk about Uttar Pradesh, it's a belt that is, uh, you know, seeing very fast growth in terms of commercial uh, work that's happening. So you look at the demographics, which whichever city you're in, look at uh, how you can, you know, what a, maybe you can pick up three places, okay, three areas that as a church, uh, before I plant, these are three areas that I can, 
you know uh, look towards i can you know uh, target this this audience now it's not necessary that you have to have this and only then plant the church no so uh, remember revelation is can come while we are working while we are doing things right uh, uh, and and we grow from strength to strength grace upon grace um, precept upon precept line upon line so even as you plant a church uh, you during the course of the planting you know you you can build on this survey that you have already made right uh, so whichever city you're in look at what that city is known for now some of us may say hey this city is not known for many things uh, maybe it's it's a small city uh, that's all right right you can just look just, i'm sure that even if it's a small city you have educational institutions you will have uh, you know working professionals so look at how you can penetrate those sections so for example mumbai right if you if you talk about in, a, in our nation of mumbai or, uh, or how can we penetrate in that kind of a city you know it's a, one of the most expensive cities in india uh, or if, if you look at other countries like uh, you know africa or australia new zealand all of these countries and the cities in those countries what are areas that i can penetrate through to plant and build the church you have some background information right then you look at civic administration like what is happening in the city population very important right population meaning what what, what is uh, sorry pollution control here uh, but uh, i want to talk about population population is very important to understand right now that comes under demographics right so you got uh, slums you got uh, uh, the high uh, working high end working the mediocre the uh, the lower mi middle class and then you got the lower class right so you got different sections of society how will you penetrate through them now remember when you plant a church or when you have a ministry there'll be times when you know a certain group of people will you know get attracted or get connected to the church right uh, so for example you have a church which is uh, you know uh, it's more of fellowship and more of you know a lot of uh, life groups and cell groups a lot of meetings um, every day there's some meeting or the other fasting and prayer praise and worship now it's most likely that you know corporate folks may not be able to attend all of that right but i'm not saying they won't come to church but uh, you will have these different sections of society and so we, we must be able to minister to those sections then de what is the culture of the city uh the social demographics right well when it you know one of the topics that you can study is world religions right when you study world religions you'll begin to understand what is happening what what are the different religions of this world what is the demographics what do they believe in uh, uh, and then how can you as a as a ministry uh, reach out and minister to these people so if you see here uh, in your notes uh, social uh, geography says 79.4% uh, uh, of bangalore's population is hindu 13% are muslims 5.8% uh, are christians and uh, and and 1.1 percent Jains, right? So you have all of this different uh, religions. So how can I uh, minister to these people? Now remember that even as you're making the survey, you may feel, uh, man, how 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 can I? You know, the the percentage is so big. I'm just not even started. How can I reach out? Uh, now, you know, this sharing about the blueprint, right? When we have a blueprint. It, it's good we know what we're working towards right so if you're building a house and the architect gives us a blueprint so you know exactly what the house is going to look like because you have the blueprint and when you have a blueprint of the city the church uh, and how you want to build your church you're working towards it you know okay this is what i want to see in my church right then you look at the quality of life socioeconomic issues right look at bangalore um and and other cities and those who are from uh, other countries you look at 
you know, look at, uh, read about it, read about what's happening. What is the quality of life? Uh, what is the cost of living? You know, is it a cosmopolitan city? What are, uh, are there expats, meaning uh, are there people coming from different parts of the city, different parts of the uh, of the country coming in, right? Uh, I know John is in Mangalore, but one of the things that I realized was uh, uh, that city had people coming in from Korea because it is an educational hub. People were coming in from Korea, from Africa. Uh, there were some some of them who came in from China. Uh, there was, uh, I think the other country was Malaysia, right? Dubai uh, from East. So you had people coming from all over the world to study in this small city, right? So, so we must understand, okay, this is where people are coming from. This is what I must do to reach out to these people. Right then, you have uh, expats here, African students, people from different parts who come in to uh, study, to work. Uh, then you look at moral values of the of the city. Right now, remember the moral values in different. It may be the same country, but different cities have different kinds of moral values. Right. Uh, some some people are favorable in a certain city. Some are not favorable. Some may favor gay and lesbians. Some may not favor gay and lesbians. Right, some may favor uh, sex before marriage, some may not. Right, so in a city, uh, sorry, in a country, different states, different cities may have different moral values. Right, so you got to understand about uh, what their value systems are. Uh, then you look at the different kinds of um, arts of living, the the culture, the the pub culture, and all of these things that are happening. Uh, especially in urban settings, right? You so addictions. What are what are the problems that children are going through? Uh, women are going through. Young men, you know, uh, teens, youth, uh, and so when you put all of this together, it will really help you to understand. Okay, it also gives you a sense of humility. It gives you a sense of wow. There's so much to achieve. There's so much to so many doors that are there, there are so much of opportunity and uh, there's a sense of okay you know, I can't do this on my own and I need God and I need God to help me and to lead us so so it's very good to do this right so if you're planning to start a church start a ministry uh, have this background information ready with you right it's not like you're going back to it every week and saying okay this is what no maybe every three months every six months you can go back to it and see okay these are areas that are yet to be touched lord open doors for me these are areas that are that we have already gone through lord give us many more opportunities as a church and so what happens is as a as a ministry as a church you're able to expand so it's not only you know my church my people building up my people remember the stages of church growth we talked about the apostolic church right towards the end you're a church that goes out reaches out it's more of giving more of doing rather than just for the sheep inside uh, the church right uh, so i don't want to explain too much about this because it's more towards bangalore but i'm sure you got get the idea make sure that you prepare well uh, before you start your ministry. So uh, before we close today, I, I just wanted to quickly go through, uh, do a quick review of uh, everything that we have done. And then, um, as I mentioned, uh, those who are not here, uh, we, we will close this course today. I'll put, put up the assignment, the final assessment. It'll be a 100 mark assessment, open book exam. Uh, I'll put the due date as well. So you can, you know, uh, write it on uh, on a Word doc, just upload it, and uh, make sure you do that before the due date, All right? So let's just quickly review, right? And then we'll close in prayer. So we talked about the Holy Spirit as our leader, right? We labor, God gives the increase, chapter two. Chapter three, we talked about the definition and objectives of church planting, right? Uh, the church, why are we planting the church? It is to build 
a community of believers. Church is not so that everyone call us pastor or just so that we get recognition of fame. It is about discipling, about building God's kingdom, advancing God's kingdom to different territories. Um, and it's it's a spiritual battle, right? Uh, chapter 4, we talked about God's heart for the city. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Uh, and you and I must develop a heart for the city. We must desire to see the city saved. We must desire to see nation, to see people saved, communities saved. Uh, so without the heart for the city, we will not be passionate about the city. Right. So we must we must have that. We must pray and ask God, God, uh, reveal. Reveal things that I must do for the city. Give me a heart for the city that I may intercede for the city, right? And very importantly, we looked at natural dynamics, right? How to, uh, you know, how to, uh, when we are building a church, and before building a church, before starting up, we we look at the uh, dynamics, the economy, the uh, the the education, all of those natural things. Um, and areas of need, how to develop strategies, how to plan out, all of those are the natural. And then you got the spiritual aspects. Chapter six, um, you know, we talked about how Satan attempts to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to destroy the work. And so, as a pioneer, as a as a ministry leader, as a pastor, you and I must be able to be strong. Be anointed of God. We must ask God. God should be the source of our strength. Remember that the battle is a spiritual battle. Right? Chapter 8, we talked about how to get started. You get a core team. Have a core team. You prepare from a distance, meaning you may be elsewhere. You may be doing a lot of research online. And then there'll come a time you go on site. You prepare financially. Don't make the mistake of just saying, I want to start and then say, you know, I uh, I need funds for, you know, buying a music system, for chairs. Prepare financially. Make sure you have everything uh, to start off with, right? Uh, now, the mistake people make is that, they, hey, God told me this, right? Uh, God told me to start, so I, I'm quitting everything I'm doing and I'm going to start. Now, God may tell us to do things, but God is also giving us given us wisdom, right? So we need to plan it out. Okay, God is telling me to do this. Okay, so I'm going to give one year, two years. I'm going to prepare myself financially, prepare for the things that are needed for my family, for the church. And then I'm going to step out. Planning for personal needs, uh, planning for legal and administrative matters, like we talked about this, right? Uh, how many churches... Uh, don't even have a trust are not even registered with the government and i shared a few examples of how there was persecution uh, to churches and uh, they could not even go to the uh, police station and file a complaint because they were not a registered trust and so it just became uh, uh, you know it just became so complicated it's a very simple thing nowadays we got lawyers you got they do everything so remember to get the legal, administrative, and regulatory matters done effectively and properly, right? Then we looked at chapter 9, which is a survey phase. You survey, you'll have to step out, you'll have to go, you'll have to uh, probably walk around, see what's happening, right? You can, of course, you can do it online as well. Uh, but the survey is more of you know, going out looking at places right uh and then the preparation phase right pre-launch meetings you, normally you can have at least three to six months of praise and worship prayer is coming together and then after that you you know you slowly get people to come and along with the core team uh you launch identify a place get the place confirmed and then you get into the launch phase. Or you can also do a house church model for maybe a year or so and then move into the launch phase. In the launch phase, the the first service, very important, right? You share the vision, share what God has put in your heart. Don't be afraid to share what, what God has put in your heart, right? 
you may have only five people and imagine you're telling those five people hey one day we will be five thousand now don't be ashamed of it right it is a vision which doesn't it doesn't cost you anything to have a good vision right it's 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 good to have big visions it's good to have big dreams uh, so share everything share what is your plan your vision your, your focus for the next five years ten years uh, put it out right when you put it out you share the vision you know there will be people who will catch that vision right um, and then as you journey along when you start off plan for good follow-up right again I shared with you the different follow-up methods we have right uh, when we talk about uh, first-time visitors we have follow-up one first follow-up one follow-up two and then we connect them to a life group welcome call follow up one follow up two and then we connect to a uh, volunteer team or a life group so have things set in place uh, so a reason why imagine you have your first service you had maybe two months have gone in you've got some new people and you're wondering hey what do i do with these new people how do i connect with them what do i say so you must be well prepared before that right uh, different strategies for urban evangelism you we need to develop different strategies for different age groups children's church uh you got the teens the gen z right we must be able to you know we can't say hey gen z is not in the bible so i can't uh, you know i can't connect with them no you got to be able to connect with them right whether they're gen z gen y the bible provides for everything right so you got to be able to relate to them right and you get people in your team teach them or maybe there will be god will send people who will you know personally for me uh you know children's church is not my cup of tea not at all right i remember going there uh, going to children's church leading worship in children's church and it was really hard for me I, I just knew it was not something for me but there are some of them who are called to do that and they do it so beautifully Right, they do it so wonderfully. So God will send people, right? And same way with teens and youth, God will send the right people. Right. So young how do I uh, reach out to married people, young couples, senior citizens, single women, single men? Uh different strategies. As a pioneer, you cannot let your mind be at rest or at a at a pace where it's you know just a straight line thinking, okay everything's going well no it may be going well but pioneer is a visionary he keeps he or she keeps looking out for opportunities right uh, i so this this should be uh, intentional it should be done in a way that is uh, you know that I, I i should be able to build the ministry I, well, especially you know uh, initially we will do that but what about 10 years down the line sometimes we feel okay ministry is going on no you got to be able as a pioneer to be influential to share the vision to to keep spreading that vision right uh, new ways of ministry must be encouraged as a pioneer right so there'll be times people will come up and give ideas in your church think about it pray about it if it's something god is leading you towards do it i love what uh, happened every time i read that it just gives me goosebumps joseph was in the prison he comes out he explains the dream to the uh, to the pharaoh what does the pharaoh say the pharaoh says since you are the you are the one who interpreted it so you're the best one who can handle this whole situation and became second in command over entire Egypt right so don't be afraid to hear from people right uh, don't be afraid to give people opportunities right don't be afraid to bring correction all of it is part of raising up the church and the ministry right uh, strategies use different uh, tools that are available Instagram Facebook performing arts dance art and craft use all of these right i remember uh, 2010 2009 2010 we had um, a very strong performing arts team and, uh, we would go into colleges uh, and we would you know lead the worship 
this two three hours two three songs of worship and then a performing arts team would come in and they would do a skit or a dance or really powerful just portraying the whole message of uh, you know the gospel now uh, sometimes we didn't even need to preach because that whole you know skit was so powerful that people were touched these are young people right youth who are in their 19 20 19 to 20 21 that's it right uh, and, and so use these tools use the le leverage tools that god has given us right then we looked at very importantly the seven mountain assignment right now the seven mountain is is our family religion education media arts and ent entertainment business and government now as a church our vision whatever our vision and mission is we must be able to or we must be willing to penetrate all spheres of influence it's not like i'm a church that will only minister to family or i'm not a church that will only reach out to education no so we need to be able to reach out to all seven spheres of influence now the question may come up how do i reach out to the government or how do i reach out to you know uh, maybe media through media okay churches can do that but how do i reach out to uh, economy businesses how do i reach out right we need to come up with strategies like right? how can we reach out right now we may not know all of the answers but now, remember that God is a God who can give us open doors, who can give us opportunities. Right? So we talked about a twofold process here uh, in terms of uh, the seven mountain ass uh, assignment. One was uh, the, the challenges that we see. So there, there'll be times there'll be no doors open. There, there'll be times when there will be too much of persecution or or, or There'll be just times when nothing's working out, but it's okay. We still have the vision ahead of you. Who is the process? When you talk about the process, it is preparation, modeling it, teaching what whatever we are doing. Uh, uh, you know, in terms of reaching out, we we prepare. We do it with integrity, excellence, kindness, uh, treating one another equally, and then. The third way is through preparation. You prepare your heart, you guard your motives, you have spiritual preparation, and you have natural preparation. Spiritual is basically tapping into the things of God, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Natural is developing skills and demonstrating excellence. Right? Now picture this, right? Just an example. You've been praying, God, open doors for me in colleges. Example. As a ministry, suddenly God opens a door for you. And they say, okay, now you'll have to speak to 500 students. And if I've not prepared, if a natural preparation is not done, what am I going to do? I'm going to be very weary and shaky, and uh, I, I, it's going to be a challenge. So here comes the important part. When you know you're praying for something, you got to also prepare naturally for it right develop your skills develop your abilities on how to speak you know speaking in church is completely different from speaking in colleges and in corporate section sectors we cannot say open to john 316 no we we need to be very wise and right? we need to know how to speak so you got to prepare uh, you know uh, ask god for ideas ask god for uh, strategies ask God how am I going to you know uh, portray or bring out this example or the story of God from God's word how am I going to bring it out in a meaningful way and we got to be very very alert we got to be wise and ask God you know God is the source of all wisdom God is the one who can open our minds give us thoughts give us ideas Right, and so all we need to do is pray, ask God, and then we prepare ourselves. Right, fourthly, we position ourselves. Uh, 
that means we position ourselves to be a transformer influencer catalyst a trend setter that means we we position our, ourselves not only personally but also as a church okay we are a church that's going to bless people and going to you know be a change in the society right then chapter 14 we talked about stages of growth and we spent a lot of time on this very 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 important but yet very powerful talked about the pioneering stage in stage one you're just building the church for five people and then there'll come a time when you may reach 100 150 people then comes administrative organizational structure remember we i shared about you know to do a one conference we work six months prior right and there's a whole list of things that we do before one conference and six months first is first is the uh, emailer the emailer goes out this is the event block your calendar after that is two sundays of uh, on the video announcements on sundays then after that goes out an email goes out for the registration link then after after the registration link is uh, a, a reminder email then finally in the six month uh, six month is uh, uh, final reminder or an encouragement to register and so by the time all of this is happening and the background is the administrative work okay so the conference maybe one week before the conference we have a number okay 150 people have registered so the administrative team does the other work you got you know the speakers who are coming making sure they have the a stay at a place then you know the food the venue everything is done getting the organization into a structure now why is this important what you do in the beginning of your pioneering stage will last almost till the end of course you can tweak you can you can make changes but you're setting the stage in your administrative time right so there will come a time when as a church you may need to hire people right because administration involves many things right um, and so you may have to do that but do it, it it's needed then is a pastoral team stage team ministry or senior pastor say that means uh, it's no more one person handling the church you have a pastoral team uh, if you have different locations associate pastors are there and under the associate pastors you have team team leaders or team ministry leaders right then you go to the next stage which is the equipping and the building stage so the leaders raise up other leaders and we're building up more and more leaders within the church so it's no more people just sitting in church receiving and going back now uh, uh, you we want to come to this mindset of everyone must be raised up to become leaders then is the apostolic stage where you know the church is just going out going to new places sending it's very little to do within the church but it's more doing to do outside of the church right now now we must understand which stage we are in and work accordingly right so for example if we are at 50 people right example right just an example and we have an administrator we have two three people in administration it's not required now imagine you have 500 people and you have one administrator one one person handling the whole thing it's going to be very difficult right? so you got to uh, ensure that at the right time right things are done and uh, and see uh, in ministry it's okay to make mistakes right? and it just helps us to become better it helps us to grow remember god is bigger than our mistakes right we will make mistakes Right. And, and then you go back, you make changes and uh, just continue to what God, uh, what God is uh, teaching us to do. And then, then finally, we just become a self-sustaining church. Uh, things just keep moving, discipleship, equipping, missions, uh, uh, just the wheels keep going in motion. But here's the time when we should be 
uh, very careful that we don't do things which is redundant, meaning it shouldn't be like, okay, I'm just doing it because it's being done. No, we need to be make sure that there's fruit out of everything that we do. Right then is the multiplication and branching, branching out new churches uh, uh, in different places. You can plant new churches um, either within the city, outside the city, uh, in different uh, parts of the nation. Again, uh, those churches can either be independent or they can be campus churches or they can also work under the home church, like follow the same pattern of the home church. but. Uh, but it's important to also look at planting other churches, right? So we looked at spiritual battle, right? The enemy tries to stop the church. So you and I are in for a spiritual warfare, right? Uh, uh, that means ministry is not a bed of roses, right? It's going to be hard work. It is going to be challenging. The enemy will come uh he it's a battleground he will come he will try to bring confusion he will try to bring fear intimidation but as believers remember we are already victorious we're already standing strong uh, god is with us his promises he will build our church the gates of hell shall not prevail so you exercise spiritual authority go back to god whenever we fall down whenever we fail can always run back to God and say, God, I know you're with me. Right? Never lose hope. Never feel that as a leader you're alone. And uh, now, uh, you know, I, I, I know that in leadership sometimes we don't have people to talk to. Uh, you know, we always are on the receiving end. We keep hearing people's problems and praying for them. Sometimes, you, uh, you know, you, you're up in the leadership and life can get lonely right uh, and it's true uh, you know jesus himself he had those 12 out of those 12 three of them were his inner circle and only one was there during when he was dying on the cross so yes it can get lonely it can get weary you may get tired emotionally tired physically tired but here's the thing we have god's word with us god's presence with us we stand back we don't let the enemy bring us down right challenges will come but the ministry will keep going forward so look at it that way identify strongholds pull down strongholds not only for other people or people in the church but also in our own lives right identify things in our life as leaders that we must change we must grow and uh, and then proclaim the uncompromised gospel right uh, uh, and equip people uh, look at chapter 22 we talked about recognizing your call to be a pioneer uh, you know it, it is a, a person who's a pioneer is a visionary uh, there's a stirring in his heart that you know god has put it the ability to work independently an initiator and you if you feel that you are all of that could be that you are a pioneer right now I, I, another aspect another point i'd like to bring out is you may be working in the corporate sector or you may be working under a ministry right it's all right uh, it's all right right but there'll come a time if god wants you to launch you can launch right he will he will he will bring you out he knows what's best for you right and he's able to he's able to but then again we need to be very sensitive to the leading of the holy spirit right um, uh, and, and so never feel that okay this is what i am and uh, this is this is what i'm going to do for the rest of my life if, you know, remember that god can open doors which we've not even thought of right so recognize your call if it's pioneering wonderful if it's working under a pioneer as a ministry leader associate pastor wonderful take it up right even that is a leadership right uh, and some of the wrong reasons is strife, competition, working as if it's a job, uh, you know, all of these things, right? Uh, just, just make sure that you're in ministry for the right reasons, right? And so even as you make the journey, uh, we talked about this last class, making the journey, chapter 24, um, right? Uh, stay focused, 
look at the vision avoid distractions be resilient be strong be persistent um, keep learning keep growing keep developing there will be times when you know people from other ministries will try to uh, you know want to affiliate or uh, you know uh, work together it's good but also be wise to make the just because it's a christian organization sometimes you know uh, we, we say okay for everything no right so in ministry we must learn to say no gracefully uh, we must be able to ensure that what you're doing in the church is beneficial to the people beneficial to the ministry right uh, be a steward of what god has given you right? uh, meaning raise up leaders uh, look at it as it's not my own but it's what god has given me right uh, encourage others uh, take care of yourself very important right uh, even as you do ministry take care of yourself right uh, if we are not in good health what ministry can we do we can't do anything right we'll be weak every time tired in our mind tired in our body no take care of your health eat healthy exercise uh, be strong be mentally strong uh, physically strong as well you need it right in ministry uh, especially as a pioneer uh, you know when you get into the apostolic stage people will start inviting you from everywhere right and many a times you will have to go right? because that's that's where your church has come up to now uh, during the initial stage the preparation stage nobody's going to invite because they don't even know who you are right they just going to plant the church but uh, after a couple of years or maybe five ten years a decade later people will start inviting you and imagine you want to go but you know we just weak physically you need to be strong and then uh, raise up the next generation the day you start your ministry also prepare and plan to leave on the same day meaning if i'm moving out who's going to take the ministry who's going to succeed this work that has been planted now remember you're leaving a legacy and you plant a church you're you're doing you're going into the the territory of the enemy and when you're going there you are bringing down the presence and the glory of god there which is a powerful thing your work is honorable in the sight of god it is honorable people may not honor it people may look down on it but when god sees it it's honorable right and finally there'll come a time as a pioneer and as a planter as a leader you will have to step down and hand over it's going to be very hard to do that and it's very very hard to step down and hand over but but we have to do it right if god i can only picture moses handing over the baton to joshua and saying joshua take the people to the promised land moses must have felt oh man i wish i could take them i did all the hard work bringing them out of egypt i had to listen to all their stories everything all the mistakes that they made and i went up to god i did everything but he had to stand and watch the people get into the promised land it's hard but that's how god works at times it's all always about moving ahead moving ahead thinking and looking at the future for what we can do in god's kingdom and even as we look at the future right never despise those small beginnings never think okay i'm if you know apostle paul says i always look forward to the things of god that's wonderful that should be our vision that should always be in our heart but also remember from where god brought us this was what i was god by your grace by your mercy you brought me thus far and i said just you're giving everything to god so all right so uh i really enjoyed teaching this course uh thank you so much each one of you for being there throughout this course um, uh, and i i just want to pray over each one of us that god will continue to minister speak to each of our hearts and uh, that the lord will do great works in and through each one of us um, 
that we may be able to plant churches, plant ministries, and extend his kingdom. And so before we close in prayer, once again, I'll, I'll put the uh, final assessment out on Google Classroom with the due date. Um, you can just feel free to answer them and post it back. Uh, any questions, any thoughts before we close in prayer? Any thoughts, any questions? Okay. Right, Jafina, thank you. Okay. All right, let's close in prayer, right? Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you so much for this entire course. Lord, we've learned about urban church planting. We've learned about how you desire, what you desire for us, Lord, a uh, desire for your city, for the nation and the nations. Lord, we pray that you will speak to each of our hearts, Lord. Maybe there's some of us here who have a bigger vision, have a bigger purpose, but there is there are many things that are hindering us. It could be money, it could be our time, it could be commitments, it could be anything, Lord. But I pray, God, that you will, in your own divine supernatural way, open doors, God. And Lord, you will enable each one of us to fulfill your plans, your purposes. Lord, that you will put in us that spirit of leadership, that we will walk in the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that we will walk, Lord, not by our own strength, but, Lord, you will empower us, you will strengthen us. Thank you, Lord, for your word that says, greater is he who, in, who is in us than he that is in the world. And even as we continue to do what you have called us to do, even as we make the journey, God, I pray, God, that you will, Lord, just continue to speak in and through us. May your vision, your, your purposes be revealed in greater clarity to each of our hearts, Lord. And even as we pursue those visions, pursue the plans and purposes that you have for us, that, Lord, we will trust in you. Lord, you're not a God who despises us, but, Lord, you're a God who loves us. I pray, God, that even those who may feel that I've wasted time, Lord, I pray that you will redeem time, Lord, restore time. That's what you do, Lord. I pray, God, that there will be a new zeal and a new fire, a new passion in each of our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us. Thank you for empowering us. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you will... Lord, continue to minister to each one of us and the students. I pray a blessing over each student. Uh, whatever plans and purposes that you have, Lord, I pray you'll bring clarity and bring vision and, and hope and strength into their hearts and spirit. We thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, thank you so much, everyone. It's such a joy, such a pleasure teaching you throughout this entire semester. Have a great break, and I'll see you next semester. God bless you all. God bless. Thank you, Pastor.